Mark and Trina Hankins invite you to a Holy Ghost meeting, April 23rd through the 25th in Alexandria, Louisiana. There are certain gifts and callings that aren't activated until you are saturated with the Holy Spirit. You won't want to miss this event with powerful praise and worship, teaching in the morning services on the person and work of the Holy Spirit, and Holy Spirit demonstration in the evening services. Join us April 23rd through the 25th. For more information and to register, visit markhankins.org. It's now time for Mark Hankins. Mark and Trina train and equip leaders in every nation through church services, leadership conferences, mission trips, and media. Get ready for a direct and joyful message about how to grow in your faith and learn more about who you are in Christ. Now, let's join Mark and Trina. Turn your Bible. We're going to look at a few places real quickly here on the joy of the Lord. Amen. And so we'll study several scriptures on why it's important for you to get happy or to rejoice and get happy as soon as possible. Amen. Romans 14, 17. And we'll look at several other verses on why you need to get happy. My daddy used to say, you can get glad in the same britches you got mad in. You know what that means? You don't even have to change your pants to get happy. In other words, usually we'd got corrected for something, and then we'd want, want to kind of mope a little bit, you know. When we, when we got corrected, we'd want to hide out somewhere, you know, mumble, you know, and say bad things to yourself, and uh, so you'd be back there. And then my daddy would never let us stay in the back. And, and keep on uh, complaining and griping, uh, feeling sorry for ourselves. He'd always say, you can't stay back there. Now come back in with the rest of the family because you, we all love you. And so he just bring, even after we got corrected, and then he would say, you can get glad the same britches you got mad in. How many of you ever been mad? Yeah. You know, there's several symptoms to being mad, not just, you know, but uh, you get mad, frustrated, uh, but you need to get glad as soon as possible. Amen. Amen. Even in the NFL, <laughs> right? When they have a touchdown, they do what? They get really glad. They have like, I think, all kinds of celebrations designed, right? They'll go in the end zone. And uh, sometimes they celebrate so much, they get a penalty. Uh, but the Lord told me, he said, there is no penalty for excessive celebration. In the kingdom of God, there is no penalty for excessive celebration. Woo! So let's look at um, um, this in Romans 14, 17, then we'll look at some other scriptures. One is uh, the kingdom of God, Paul says. The kingdom of God, and he, he, he breaks it down like this. He says, is righteousness, so that's, that's very important, isn't it? Understanding righteousness, the gift of righteousness. A lot of good teaching on that. He said, the second thing is peace. In other words, having peace in your heart and your mind, not frustrated and upset. You know, that affects your health, right? It affects everything. So you have righteousness, peace. And then the last one, he says, the kingdom of God, is joy in the Holy Ghost. So this morning, we're going to talk about joy in the Holy Ghost. Must be a special category of joy if he calls it joy in the Holy Ghost. And wherever that joy in the Holy Ghost is, it is a demonstration of the kingdom of God. Amen. All right, let's try that one more time. Wherever that joy in the Holy Ghost is. Now, you say, what do you call it joy in the Holy Ghost? Well, on the day of Pentecost, when they got filled, they must have really been having a good time because people accused them of being intoxicated. Well, Peter had to stand up and say, these are not drunk as you suppose, in other words. So they not only were filled with the Holy Spirit, spoke in other tongues, but they must have been looking like they're kind of having a party. And so this joy in the Holy Ghost is really a supernatural joy. And wherever that joy is, there's always a demonstration. All right, so it's more than just words 
there is a demonstration of that joy. Matter of fact, when the word rejoice is used, it's not something that you can just read. It's something that must happen. All right, let's try it again. I said, when the word rejoice. And so the Lord told me years ago, he said, if you only knew what happens in the spirit when you rejoice. All right, let's try it one more time. I, it's, it's, it's extremely, extremely frustrating to the devil for you to be happy. <laughs> I mean, because I mean, he's doing everything he can to make you miserable and make you, make you actually bad advertisement <laughs> for the kingdom of God. And so this joy in the Holy Ghost is a supernatural kind of joy. And you can't be filled with the Holy Spirit without having this kind of joy. And so this joy, even the anointing of the Holy Spirit, is called the oil of joy. Fresh anointing would be fresh joy. In other words, you cannot get a sad anointing. I know some people that does appear that they might have gotten one, but you cannot get a sad anointing. The anointing is called the oil of joy. And the Holy Spirit will have you laughing at the most unusual time. You know, not the obvious time, but unusual times the Holy Spirit will prompt you to rejoice. I said the Holy Spirit will prompt you to rejoice. At the most unusual time. You'll even try to tell him, this is not a good time. We're going through some challenges right now. Come on. Got some problems right now. But what did James say? Count it. Oh, let's try it again. Count it. All oh, joy. Count it all joy. He says, when you're having different kinds of tests, different kinds of trials, he says, count it all joy. Knowing this, the trying of your faith. So your faith is involved here. Your faith is kind of on trial. The trying of your faith works patience. In other words, uh, my dad said with God, payday is not every Friday. In other words, you don't always know when the harvest is going to come. But it's going to come. Amen. So if it don't show up by Friday. Don't stop rejoicing because it's still coming. But it says, count it all joy, knowing this, the trying of your faith works patience. Let patience have its perfect work that you may be perfect and entire, wanting nothing. How many believe God can get you where you are to a place that you say, I want nothing. Everything is taken care of. The Father God is taking care of me. Amen. I'm not, I'm not struggling here, in other words. So there's, when he says to count it all joy, I don't believe he's just trying to make us look silly. All right, let's try it again. In other words, he said, come on, you might be having a challenge, and he'll say, you need to count that joy. Now, if you look at it, some other translations where it says count it all joy, other translations will say different things, but my favorite one says count it maximum joy. That means your joy must have a minimum and it must have a maximum. In other words, if you're going to count that situation, maximum joy, knowing this, come on, that means you've got some inside information on this situation. Come on, that God's working on that situation for you. And that's a sign you have cast all your cares on him. Not half of them, all your cares, all your worries, all your anxieties upon him because he cares for you. So he can't really care for it as long as you're holding on to it. But the moment you turn loose of it, you say, God's got that now. I'm not worried about it. Come on. All of us have responsibilities but you don't have to live in worry and anxiety. Come on, how many like to cast some things on the Lord? Say, I refuse to. I'm not going to worry about that no more. 
Not going to cry about it no more. Not going to be upset about it no more. I cast that on the Lord, the worry, the anxiety. And he's taking care of it. Amen. Amen. And so that joy, count it all joy, maximum joy. That means turn your joy up. Now, you don't have to have a Ph.D. to do this. <laughs> I, like to, I like to say, um, if you get happy, it actually makes you better looking. Now, don't look at anybody right now, but you say you might consider that. If you get happy. Now, I say it this way sometimes. If you get happy, people forget you're ugly. But anyway, so if you get happy... <laughs> It, I know you're not ugly. I'm just saying somebody on TV might have thought that, and we're casting that down. But uh, if you get happy, your whole countenance, it makes you more attractive when you get happy. So now here you're facing a challenge, and you're going to do what? Count it all joy. How many know you have to do that on purpose? <laughs> it ain't going to happen accidentally. You have to decide, all right, I got different kind of challenges here and here, and so I'm going to count it all joy. That means I'm going to go from minimum joy to maximum joy. Now, these, these, are, these are just God's instructions. You understand? If God gave you an instruction of how to deal with challenges and how to overcome, this would be his instructions. I know you don't want to do that. You don't feel like doing it. But God said, if you want to overcome that situation, you're going to have to count it all joy. So one of my favorite quotes comes from the author C.S. Lewis. And C.S. Lewis said, Joy is the serious business of heaven. Now, you just can't say it any better than that. He said, joy is the serious business of heaven. That means anytime heaven is taking care of serious business, it will happen in an atmosphere of joy. So sometimes when people get real happy, especially at church, come on, the Holy Spirit, strengthens you and anoints you and you start praising. Come on, then you start getting happy. Hallelujah. How many of y'all ever been in a real happy church and they started praising, getting happy? Come on. I was raised in a Holy Ghost church, so my mama was the first, first responder. That means my mama would start praising, rejoicing, and joy would hit the place. It, didn't, it did not happen every Sunday, but it, you just couldn't tell when it was going to happen. In other words, when the pressure was on, my mama started, praise the Lord, hallelujah, thank you, Jesus. Woo! And she would shout like that. And she would run around the church. Even when she was in her 80s, she couldn't really run, but she could scoot. So she would <laughs> scoot around the church. Now, if you can't do that, maybe we'll get a designated runner for you. Or <laughs> maybe you could just scoot. For my mama, that was a demonstration that God is taking care of it. Victory is mine right now. Not someday, but right now, victory's mine. She would run around the church kind of like Elijah when he said, I hear the sound of an abundance of rain. Come on. Come on, drought the last three and a half years, but the next three and a half years, come on, the power of God, the reign of God, the goodness of God. And she would just run. She would take off running. You say, do I have to do that? No, but I'm going to give you a couple things that might help you. <laughs> Count it all joy. All right, let's work on that. Number one, one joy. If we're going to go to 10 joy. Some of y'all have been a long time since you had excessive celebration. Come on, Psalm 68 says, let the, let the righteous be glad. Let them rejoice exceedingly. 
Come on, so you need to rejoice until somebody says, that's a bit excessive right there. <laughs> Let them rejoice exceedingly. <laughs> One of my favorite testimonies, of course, is how uh, Jesse got saved, how Kathy got saved, and how Kathy got filled with the Holy Ghost, and then Jesse got filled with the Holy Ghost. So one of my favorite, I just showed her a picture on my phone when they were at our church uh, years ago, and uh, she's kind of out in the middle of the front, you know, with her hands up, she, you know, shouting, you can tell. And so, uh, real demonstrative. <laughs> Praising the Lord. But her testimony, uh, I think is one of my favorite testimonies, is she went forward she heard about being filled with the Holy Spirit. She went forward to be filled with the Holy Spirit. So she was up there. I think she was, might have been kneeling down and uh, standing up, her uh, hands up. She wanted to be filled with the Holy Spirit. They prayed so you could be filled with the Holy Spirit. So you can't get filled with the Holy Spirit without getting full of joy. They kind of come together. And so she wanted to be filled. They prayed for her. And she said, I was up there, you know, Want to be filled? And then she said, I heard somebody up here screaming. Ah! She said, I thought, what is that? Then she said, oh, I think that's me. So she <laughs> In other words, joy that you cannot contain. Come on, I said, how many have joy you cannot contain? You can't keep it quiet. You can't be still about it. You got to let it out, man. I got joy. And Peter called it joy unspeakable and full of glory. Ooh. Hallelujah. So let's see if we can work with this a little bit, all right? So maximum joy. Uh, one joy would kind of be like a smile. Some of y'all haven't even reached that yet this morning. I would say show your teeth or your tooth. <laughs> Amen. So the toothbrush invented in Arkansas, right? Because invented anywhere else be called a teeth brush. But uh, it's a toothbrush. So show your tooth. Smile. Come on, notify your countenance. <laughs> How many ever looked at yourself in the mirror and you realize what the rest of us have to look at? <laughs> I mean, I thought about bringing a mirror to church and preaching saying, you want everybody to look at that? In other words, just brighten up your countenance. Come on, you ain't supposed to be walking around looking like a mass murderer. <laughs> Come on, people see you in the store. Come on, smile. You say, why? Well, my name's written down in heaven. I know I have eternal life. I mean, come on. Even if I rode a bicycle up here, I know I have eternal life. Come on now, I got the life of God. That means when I die, I ain't going to hell. I'm going to heaven. Amen. To be with the Lord forever. No sickness, no pain. You got a bright future. Amen. No matter, come on, what people say or what's going on in the economy. So uh, you say, well, how come you're so happy? You say, you know, I ain't going to hell. I got eternal life. Amen. 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 Just tell the mortician to put a hanger in your, in your mouth when it's time for you to get in the casket. And people will look over there and you'll have a big smile. Like, that's there. He's happy about something. Anyway. <laughs> Absent from the body, present with the Lord. Listen, you cannot lose with what we got. You cannot lose with what we use. Amen. And people go to heaven, Dad Hagen said, people go to heaven, none of them want to come back. He said, nobody goes to heaven and goes, I miss the house and the neighborhood. And he said, no, nope. Listen, you might miss them, but they are not missing you, I can tell you that. In other words, they're having a blast in heaven. Heaven's a happy place. I said, heaven is a happy place. No devil, no sickness, no pain. Come on now. That's where you're headed. You've got a bright future. Amen. Amen? Amen? So that should at least affect your countenance. 
I, you know, I see people sometimes in church, and I know a little bit about this, but I'm not sure how much I know about it. But you know how these people get that Botox? <laughs> Have you ever seen anybody with Botox? Especially if you're a preacher and you're in church and they had Botox. You're like, are they sad? Are they mad? What is it? Their face is like that. They can't smile. Come on. The eyes, in other words, they had Botox. We used to have a woman sit on, sit on the front and I didn't know it. I told Trent, I said, she's like mad all the time or something. And she said, Mark, she had Botox. I said, ah, so they took all your wrinkles out, you know. You can't even be happy about that. And I mean, nobody would even know if you were happy about it. <laughs> I, I think some people had their, their faith, their faith Botoxed. I like what Jesse said. He said, nope, I'm going to keep all this. This is all me. He said, it's all me. Amen. I earned it, hallelujah, so got a few extras and wrinkles and stuff, but I got happy wrinkles, hallelujah. Amen. So one joy basically be uh, working on your countenance. You saw the t-shirt that said, I might be fat, but you're ugly, and I can lose weight. <laughs> So, whatever situation you're dealing with, you can be happy. So, so number one joy is, is your countenance. We're still on number one. You understand I'm having trouble with some of y'all at number one. One joy. The key to your victory. Work on your countenance. Look at somebody next to you and say, what do I look like? And see if they think you're a happy person. You're watching Mark Hankins Ministries, Faith for Every Nation. Do you want to know how to have victory in every area of your life? Do you want to learn how to rejoice no matter the circumstances you are going through? The Lord spoke these words to Pastor Mark Hankins. If you only knew what happens in the spirit when you rejoice, you would rejoice every day. In the secret power of joy, Mark and Trennis shows believers how to bring the heavenly atmosphere of joy into the reality of their daily lives. You will see the relationship between the blood of Jesus and joy in the Holy Spirit. You also get as a bonus the four CD set, Faith Laughs at Impossibilities. In these messages, you will learn, I love to laugh, Faith Laughs at Impossibilities, the shout of joy, and supernatural joy. Joy is the bridge between believing and receiving. Be the one who is quick to believe him and respond to the prompting of the Holy Spirit and rejoice. Watch God turn your life around. Your gift of any amount will help Mark and Trina Hankins train believers around the world. Our vision is for believers to catch the spirit of faith, learn who they are in Christ, and be strengthened by the move of the Holy Spirit. When you sow into someone's need, your needs are met. When you sow into someone's dream, your dreams will come to pass. For your gift of any amount, you will receive the Secret Power of Joy book and the 4CD set, Faith Laughs at Impossibilities. Please call 318-767-2001 or visit MarkHankins.org. Thank you, World Missions Partners. Together we can, together we will. Thank you so much for tuning in today and listening to our message on joy, the secret power of joy. Do you know that if you have joy, you have strength? If you start to get sad and down and depressed and discouraged, you will lose your strength. But if you can stay in joy and determined to keep your joy, no matter what you're facing, you can be strong. And when you are strong, you can keep going and see the end of your faith. I encourage you today to get my dad's book, The Secret Power 
of joy. It teaches you how to use joy as a tool in your faith. So you can go to markhankins.org or call the number on the screen. Get this book. It will be a helper of your joy. Until next time, I'm Alicia Hankins Moran. Have a great day. He sent his word and healed them and delivered them from their destructions. Mark and Trina have taken the gospel of Christ and the word of faith to many nations for over 50 years with this mandate. Their desire is to train and equip believers in the U.S. and around the world with the in Christ message, the spirit of faith and the move of the Holy Spirit. They do this primarily at leadership conferences, church services, and Bible school. When leaders are impacted, they are able to take the same message and anointing back to their churches and ministries in remote areas. Many of these countries they have gone to multiple times and continue to build on the work they are doing. Because of this, another major part of the ministry is the translation and distribution of our books. Dad Hagen said, the greatest distribution of the gospel in the end times will be the printed page. The amazing thing is our books go places we may never go and reach people that we may never know. Right now, we have over 40 books that have been translated in many different languages. We are believing for our books to be translated into 100 different languages. Another major assignment of Mark Hankins Ministries is our daily television program. The television program has expanded the reach of the word tremendously. Every day, we are able to come into people's homes and teach the word to people of all ages, denominations, and walks of life. We are amazed at the testimonies we receive from people who watch the television program and have been healed, set free, and set on fire with the word. The influence of the television program continues to grow, and the program now has the potential to reach over 80 million homes with the life-changing word of God. We recently completed the construction of our new conference center at our ministry headquarters. We like to see this facility as a distribution center for the gospel. We host many multiple day conferences every year and it houses our new television studio. The studio allows us to pipe out the word to more people than ever before. Now is not the time to slow down, but we believe there is an acceleration of the assignment to reach more people more languages, and more nations with the gospel of Jesus. We want to thank our faithful World Missions partners. Your gifts, large and small, all join together and make a huge impact for the kingdom of God, not only here in the U.S., but also around the world. If you could see all the faces of people reached and how their lives are transformed, you would see how their spirits are encouraged and set on fire. Each individual represents a unique story of redemption and restoration in the Lord Jesus Christ, a testament to the unfailing love of our Heavenly Father. Together, let us continue to use every avenue possible to take the life-changing gospel and word of faith to as many people and to as many nations. Remember, together we can, together we will. Thank you for watching Mark Hankins Ministries, Faith for Every Nation. For more information on how to build your faith, visit markhankins.org.